my name is uh, Hilary Nanman Dachelem. I am a Claritian missionary. I joined the Claritians in 1986 and I belong to the Eastern uh, Province. I am originally from Kwanpan, local government area of uh, Plateau State of Nigeria. And um, I was called, I was appointed by Pope Francis on the 31st of um, May to be the Bishop of um, Bauchi Diocese. I was consecrated on the 17th of August and installed the Bishop of Bauchi. And uh, since then, I've been working in my diocese. I just came to Rome to be able to meet with my uh, the general government and my father general, and also for the beatification of some of our saints, uh, martyrs in uh, Barcelona, and then to take some type of pilgrimage at uh, Fatima in Portugal. Now I'm on my way back. Um, to be candid, I cried. I cried, you know, I wept so much. But uh, after some time, I discovered that the uh, Pope will not change his decision because of my cry. <laughs> so I just have to take the bull by the horn and face the, face the work that, was, <laughs> that the Lord has assigned to me. The very fact of uh, daring to be a priest is already a risk. So you can dare to be a priest and say you would not accept the work of a bishop. It's uh, nemos, but uh, with the Lord who has been accompanying us from the beginning, he will still continue to accompany us. So trusting in this Lord, we believe that we will do the much we can. Um, my founder was a missionary and he was a bishop as well. And uh, St. Anthony Mary Claret was a missionary to Cuba. Uh, so I am very much aware of that. Uh, as a Claritian, I also know that I have a special devotion to Mary. I also know that Eucharist is not something to toy with. I also know that the Word of God is a serious matter for the Claritians. So all these uh, areas I intend to bring and emphasize in my diocese. The devotions to Mary, that was why I went to Fatima, you know, so that uh, Mary will groom me well, so that I'll be able to help the diocese to, to come on board on the devotion to Mary. The Word of God, I will collaborate with the traditions. I've talked to the biblical scholars in my diocese to see how we can begin something, an institute or anything that will create revenue and a rendezvous for people to be taught the Word of God. I, as a clarion, I don't want to joke with that. And the Eucharist, of course, which is the center of our worship and everything, I intend to emphasize it, and we have already studied it, and um, I have talked to our priests on that, the need um, to take the Eucharistic sacrifice a very serious word. Then simplicity of life also is uh, something I intend to do as a clarification. Um, it's not easy but we will try to put another touch of simplicity and humility to our work because um, uh, uh, you know the concept and understanding of a bishop sometimes is like a very big mind somewhere. I want to feel simple, <laughs> you know, uh, not to simplify and um, dilute the doctrines of the church, no, but to know that Christ himself was a simple being. So we bring down that and um, that's what I'm trying to do. And then the missionary spirit. So I'm in a missionary diocese in uh, Bauchi and the northeast where there are Muslim Christian tension of coexistence. Very big challenge for me and for others. So our founder was a missionary.
So I'm working towards interreligious dialogue. That's why I'm working towards trying to train some priests and to study Islam so that they can understand the language of the Islamic people. Then we can enter into a meaningful dialogue, dialogue of life, dialogue that will bring positive change for mutual and peaceful coexistence. When people were celebrating the beatification, I was confronted with what do I do if the challenge falls on me as the next person to be martyred? What if they wake up sometime and say, hey, you bishop, you priest, you come this way, we want to kill you, we want you to stop this, and what will I do? So the martyrs have already shown me the way. I cannot give up Jesus at this point. We have traveled a long way with the Lord Jesus in the church. So I cannot betray the church. I cannot give up Jesus. I cannot give up our mother. I cannot give up the, the substance, which is the Eucharist. We will not give up the faith for any reason. This is the way I feel. It has stirred me up to know that the gospel also has, is full of challenges that is right there before me every day. So I think I feel it more, much more than others will see it because I'm not just celebrating the, the victory of my brothers, but I'm remembering about also the challenge before me also to give of my life so that I can gain it in the, on the last day. I wish I would be in their midst to enjoy with them because um, it's a wonderful time. The young people are the beloved of the Lord. They're the beloved of the Lord, the innocent ones of the Lord. The, the Lord loves them so much that He told us not to do away with them. We should bring them closer. And um, I think any good shepherd should think of bringing the youth together. For the youth, I will say the Lord Jesus loves you. That you are a young person is not a license to sin. You can also enjoy yourself as a youth. You can enjoy yourself as a youth without committing sin. So we have to make this discernment. And we have to know that in this period that we are, youth must sit and stand up for their rights. The young people should sit up. They should go and lay hands on self-reliance um, um, efforts. They should go and embrace skills acquisition, fend for themselves, lay hands on traits, so that they will pick up and live their life happily. Let them not wait until things are done for themselves. And they can do it. They have all the abilities. They have all the dynamism. They have all the charism. They have all that it takes. And with the help of God, they're going to go anywhere. That's my feeling. And I wish them the best.